If you want to learn a new language, there is something that can help you to acquire a decent pronunciation much easier. This is IPA. No, another IPA. This one. IPA stands for the International Phonetic Alphabet. And if this chart looks scary to you, don't panic. This whole thing covers all 7000 languages on Earth. It's a construction set. Instead of bricks, you have sounds. You just need to understand the logic and see how the IPA applies to a target language. And if you have doubts, then this is how I sounded before learning the IPA. Feel the difference. The International Phonetic Alphabet was created more than a hundred years ago by a group of French and British language teachers. English and French are famous for their complicated spelling. How would you read these French words? Tranquille Bouilloire Gueule French spelling rules are complex but consistent. So if you know the rules, you can read any new word. English leaves you no chance. There are so many exceptions that you just have to memorize them. How would you read O-U-G-H? It has at least eight pronunciations in American English. It's off as in rough, ow as in plow, oo as in through, o as in though, ah as in thought, off as in cough, up as in hiccup, ock as in lock. Complex spelling is only a part of the problem. Your target language will almost certainly have sounds that don't exist in your mother tongue. And even worse, if you mispronounce the word, its meaning may totally change. French has vowels e and e that do not exist in English. These words sound as jeune, jeune. The first means fast, the second means young. So how is the IPA going to help here? In the IPA, one letter corresponds to exactly one sound. This French word is spelled with four letters, but it sounds like O. That is why it's just one letter in the IPA. O. The IPA is unambiguous. Each letter has one fixed sound value. In English, C stands for S in cell, but for K in Celtic. In the IPA, the S sound is always written as S and the K sound is always written as K. In the IPA, if two sounds differ, then their spelling must differ. TH in English can stand for TH like in thin and TH like in this. The IPA employs two different symbols here. The IPA is based on the Latin alphabet. You don't have to learn a completely new script such as Cyrillic, Arabic or Devanagari. Look at the IPA transcription. Ruka, Pani, Pila. The IPA is universal. It aims to represent sounds of all human languages. The IPA scales perfectly. You learn its logic only once and then use it for any language you need. The IPA transcription gives precise information to position your mouth, lips and tongue and get the sounds right. Can't you just listen to native speakers? Well, your brain will try to identify sounds of your native language. You won't be able to accurately reproduce the recordings unless you're one of the few very gifted people. For the majority of learners, it's important to understand the theory. The best approach is to use both the IPA and recordings. The IPA gives you the background information and a mental structure to start with. The recordings allow you to fine-tune the sounds to match up with native speakers. We're gonna delve into the IPA in the next videos, so please subscribe. Are you familiar with the IPA? Which languages do you find challenging because of their pronunciation or spelling? Leave your answers in the comments down below. You can transcribe them with the IPA, it's gonna be fun. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.